laid back and kicking it, let's head back to the studio. Here's Rod. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Welcome back to the RP Show, everybody, on this Thursday, episode number 546 of Canada's Daytime Sports Talk Show. Coming your way on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live. And uh, it's a big honor to welcome back Cole Sillinger here in in the bunker. A lot has changed in his life since the last time he was here. He's now an NHL property, I guess you could say, Cole. Um, It's... Man, it's been now. That I think a lot has happened yeah. since you've been in here. <laughs> it's been over a year. Mm-hmm. How's the summer been for you? Let me start with that. Yeah, it's been good. I've been uh, been training pretty hard and uh, been skating quite a bit. So um, I, I was pretty busy up until the draft, doing a lot of Zoom interviews and stuff like that. And then um, obviously after the draft, I uh, I was in Calgary there for the World Junior Camp. Uh, it was a seven day long camp. It was real good. Um, got back in the thick of things and stuff like that. And now I have time to, you know, kind of just relax and, and take those last couple weeks in. Well, I'll tell you what, for our viewers that don't know, just to say it right now, Cole's first round pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets, 11th overall first round, played last year with the Sioux Falls Stampede, Medicine Nat Tigers the year before that. But the last time you were in here, you were with your dad, Mike, the yeah. longtime <laughs> NHLer, what, 12 teams, 18 years? I'm right on that, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, you were just uh, coming off your rookie year in Medicine Hat. Not much was going on. Yeah. And then the world ended. <laughs> really, COVID yeah. hit. So let's just walk that back a little bit. Uh, the WHL season was canceled. We went into the Hub Center, and but you were long gone. So what was mm-hmm. it that you decided in January that you wanted to go down to the USHL? Let's yeah. let's start there. I'll, I'll take you back to August. Even so, before that, yeah, sure. In, in August, yeah. um, Sioux Falls listed me. Um, uh, you no, know, Marty Murray is a coach there, and GM. He kind of knew that um, the, the states had a better chance of playing than in Canada. So uh, he just kind of threw him on the roster just because. And uh, when the Western Hockey League gave all, all players release till December 20th, I chose to go down there. Um, it was actually like, I was down there for the month of October, but there were still some transfer issues between Hockey Canada, USA Hockey, um, Sioux Falls, and Medicine Hat, right? So um, I was down there, practiced, got met the whole team, met the organization, but I couldn't play any games. So um, I had to come back and I had to make the final decision what I was gonna do if I was gonna wait for Western Hockey League to start or go back there before January 10th. And I mean, we had, or I had like 10, 11 months off and you know, I believe I did everything I possibly could to, to make myself a better hockey player and a better person. And I want to make sure I got the, got the chance to go show that and, and prove to myself that. So I mean, um, playing guaranteed games down in the USHL, um, it made it a good choice. Um, I had all the support in the world from Whaley and my whole Medicine Hat team. So um, that was awesome. I mean, in the end too, I'm a young guy, I'm 18 years old. And, and I believe that playing games is the best thing for my development. Very, uh lucky i think too that you mm. hold dual citizenship yeah right? yeah so, so that helped out a where little. where were you born columbus you were yeah <laughs> okay so let's yeah. talk about so they've done all those that? stories in the columbus yeah. media probably now that you were born yeah. there and so let's talk about that though and i want to say i reached your dad on the golf course in scottsdale while you were in sioux falls and he, he explained all of what you just yeah. did but he said that it's worked really easy for you that you had dual citizenship. So maybe talk about that. If you hadn't had an American passport, would you have been able to pull this off as easily? Um, maybe not as easily. I think the, the rule is uh, the, uh, any USHL team can have, I think it's three or five Canadian players on their roster. Um, and we had two Canadians. So, I mean, it would have made it a little bit easier um, that we only had two and not three Canadians on the team. But yeah, since I was uh, a dual citizen, I was kind of I registered as a USA hockey player. Well, I often wonder about this, and this is the stuff that people don't normally think about, but did you drive to Sioux Falls? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so you get to the border. Yeah. Connor Ingram told me this story. He yeah. was driving from Imperial to Nashville, and mm-hmm. the guy was like, what do you do? <laughs> what was it like getting into the States? Was that okay? She showed them my American passport. They said, welcome home. So that, that was it. That, that was it. Yeah. They didn't no. ask what you were doing? Well, they asked how, how long I'd be there for and what I was doing. I said, I'm playing hockey down there. I got my American passport. And they're like, welcome home. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's easy. <laughs> that's good. Well, you're a clean living kid, too. Yeah. That makes it easy. Yeah. But was it not? Because all of a sudden, I'm following all the Sioux Falls Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And you were lighting it up right from the start. Was it not your first game that you sniped from, like, 40 feet out second game in. who's yeah. your second yeah first game in we uh we were playing sioux city um yeah it was just, it was good to get, get to get my feet under myself and stuff like that but we won an overtime big game and then the next night is when i uh, scored my first goal and kind of just felt really relieved but um we didn't get the win which sucked yeah well but overall 
because I do remember the last time you were here, I asked you if this game is easy for you, and both you and your dad looked at me like, no, it's not easy, but it, <laughs> it looks easy for you. How did you find the quality of play in the USHL compared to the dub? Very good. I mean, uh, they're both, um, I mean, they're different styles of play, right? So the, the Western Hockey League, in my opinion, um, there's a little bit more skill, and because of that, um, the game happens smoother, uh, more structure, more execution on you know, two-on-ones, three-on-twos, special teams, just stuff like that. Whereas in the USHL, um, it's an older league. All guys are you know, 18, 19, or 20 years old, ready to go to college, you know, play a greasy style play. Um, more so of a chip and chase style hockey, but I mean, you look at the draft picks every single year. I mean, the USHL has, I mean, even these past years and moving forward, they, they have more and more each year, right? So, um, yeah, both really good leagues in my opinion. No kidding. And talk about the barn. Uh, yeah, is it new? Or? Uh, yeah, it's real new. It's, it's the nicest junior rink I've ever played in. in really? North yeah. Yeah. Real nice. It's, uh, we got, I think it seats like, 10,450 and we sold it out once this year so um obviously the restrictions weren't weren't too heavy down there but i mean yeah the the fan base is crazy down there and it's just no it was it was good to have a normal normal type year sounds like it so listen i uh my brother's a cowboy and he follows what goes on in south dakota <laughs> very closely and like they yeah. acted like covid wasn't even a thing yeah yeah. Was that what, life just seemed normal to you? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we had some restrictions within our team because we didn't want to get, uh, I mean, if there were, if we had a case on our team, then um, we would have to cancel games or reschedule games and stuff like that. So um, we, we kept it pretty tight within our group. But yeah, the, the city, I mean, you didn't have to, really have to wear a mask anywhere and uh, there was no really limits on a capacity. So yeah, there was basically no COVID. <laughs> do they know? crazy. Do they know hockey down there? Yeah, they do. They like the Stampede is like their NHL. Like everyone knows the Stampede. Wow. Everyone follows them. Yeah, it's pretty special down there. So yeah. before I asked you before we went to air where you're going to play next year, mm -hmm. and you said, "Well, Columbus or Medicine Hat." Do they know that in Sioux Falls? How's it going to go over yeah. if uh, you're not back there? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> when I went down there, I was on a you no, know, just kind of like a one-year, like it was just a transfer kind of AP card. So as soon as I played my last game down there, my rights automatically switched back to Medicine Hat. So yeah, the, the Tigers hold all my all my rights as of right now. But the fans, because listen, I saw what the Tigers fans were saying. They're like, we love you, Cole. We miss you. <laughs> right when you were in yeah. Sioux, yeah. Sioux Falls, I would assume the Sioux Falls fans would be saying the same thing next year, I yeah. would think. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> I made a good yeah. impression on them. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So to the, well, going in order here, the World Under 18 Championships mm -hmm. in Frisco, Texas, Saw you on the list to go, saw you not on the roster for yeah. the first game. We're like, what's going on here? Yeah. So take me through that. Because this, is, folks, is the pre-draft showcase for all the draft-eligible kids. And Connor Bedard was there. He's not yeah. draft-eligible, as you know. But So you got down there um, or not? So it was so on Wednesday, I played in a, a game. It was the All-American game. So basically all the top draft prospects from the USHL played the U.S. national team. And uh, so that was in Michigan, and that was on a Wednesday. So you had to get three negative COVID tests to go to that one, and I did. So I proved three negative tests, played in that game, and then I bust from Michigan to Waterloo to play my last two games um, with Sioux Falls. On It was a Friday and Saturday. Played those two, and then Sunday I flew to Arizona to quarantine with my parents because prior to the tournament you needed to have a five-day isolation period. And, I mean, in, in Sioux Falls, my billet mom was a nurse, and I had billet kids in and out of school. So um, it was suggested by Hockey Canada and, uh, you know, kind of the double IHF to, to go quarantine in Arizona as my parents were fully vaccinated at the time. So um, I went down there. I had my first shot of vaccine. And in those span of five days, you needed four COVID tests. And, uh, you know, I tested a positive on, on one day, and I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, I, got, I feel great. I got no symptoms at all. I have my first shot of vaccine. And uh, the hockey hockey Canada Double IHF came up with the uh, with the system. If I can prove three negatives in a row, then they'll deem that first one a false positive. So my next one was negative. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> and then my next one was negative. I'm like, okay, I'm going. I'm to going back. to Texas. I'm going to Texas. <laughs> Get tested on the, on that Friday. I'm flying out that Sunday, and uh, got my test back on Saturday, and it was positive, and it sucked because you had to be if you weren't in that in the bubble. By that Sunday, you couldn't get in. So that's why I couldn't take three more tests the following week. So were you worrying the fact that you weren't going to play? How, how would it affect your draft status? Or how, how did you mentally deal with this? Um, I mean, it, it was a tough thing for sure. I mean, anytime you have an opportunity to represent Canada, 
um, at the world stage, you're going to want to do it right. I mean, not too many people from Regina um, have that opportunity. So um, it was it was a tough, tough pill to swallow. But but the way I looked at it was, I mean, it was such a crazy year. I mean, guys were got or guys got taken out of the World Juniors because of it. Um, you saw the University of Michigan never got to play um, in that Elite Eight tournament or the College mm -hmm. Hockey Tournament because they had COVID. So um, I, I wasn't the only guy. So that's kind of the way I looked at it. And also, I mean, I, I got to play 30 games in front of fans and had a normal year. And for some of the guys on um, Team Canada, it was their first games of the year. So um, looking back on the year, I, I believe I developed as a player and as a person. And uh, Create a lot, created a lot of um, relationships with my teammates that'll last forever. So yeah, that's kind of the way I had to look at it. How heavily scouted would you say the US USHL is? This year, um, lots. I mean, uh, it was only only rinks in North America that allowed full fans. So yeah, we had probably say 50 plus scouts every night, oh. every time we played. So, so you're yeah. good. So that's why then, well, <laughs> and I'll just ask you one question about the world under 18s because Connor Bedard was named player of the tournament. We watched every game. I think he averaged yeah. over two points a game. Um, a shame that you didn't get a chance to play with him, but you will <laughs> in the years ahead, I'm sure, in international competition, I hope. Anyways, um, what about this kid? Did you yeah. know him before? Um, no, obviously you see all of his highlights throughout yeah. the year. And uh, yeah, he's just a, a real good player, real smooth. Um, Real good shot. So, yeah, it, it was really exciting to watch him um, do what he did at the under-18s. And then actually this past this past week here, I um, got to know him a little bit um, at, at the World Junior Camp. He was, again, with the under-18s. I was with the U-20s. So we were kind of split up a bit. But, um, but the last game, they merged us together and, and got to know him a bit and, and see his skill. Yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal player and will be a real good player um, in the National Hockey League. You got some pretty big high, uh, headlines when you scored four in a scrimmage last week. How did that game go? What happened there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've never played in a game that was 9-8 before in <laughs> overtime. So um, that was different. But, yeah, um, it, it was just it – was, it was good for me to do that. I mean, I um, you know, played well, thought I played hard throughout the week. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have a couple couple good bounces go my way. And uh, I'll give a lot of credit to my linemates. They, they found me in open areas and, uh, you know, just put the puck in that. And things were going well. We were clicking. If you can say, what did you guys think about Connor Bedard not being with the with the under twenties, and being kept with the under eighteens? Because I didn't think that was right. I'm like, he's going to yeah. play in the tournament anyways. <laughs> Put him up with the big guys. What did you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, he, he. I don't really have an opinion on it. He's good enough to, to obviously <laughs> um, be in that group that um, know that that I was in that that all the under twenties were in. Um, but I mean, he's he's got a lot of buddies in the under eighteens too. So I don't think that. Uh, he really sort of sort of cared or sort of cared that he had the labelment of being in the under 18s because he knows that um, if he's got a, he's got a good uh, good first half he's going to have a real good chance of making the world juniors. Mm -hmm. so. so to the draft, I'm backing up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You go to Columbus 11th overall. I literally, I go to bed early. I waited to see <laughs> where you went, and I yeah. I wasn't waiting too long, and then I went to bed. 11th overall to the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> uh, how did that feel? Yeah, it was uh, it was very exciting. I mean. Um, we had a we have a pretty wide open draft, so any anywhere from um, after the after the first couple of picks, I was starting to get more nervous and nervous. I'm hmm. um, just waiting for my name to get called. And uh, actually, Columbus made that uh, it was a trade, and I wasn't on my phone all day. So when we turned the draft on, and I saw Columbus was picking that spot, I'm like, hmm, they must have made a pretty big trade today. And then uh, yeah, they ended up taking me at that with that pick, so that was pretty special. And you were here that night, right? Yeah, yeah, I was at. Uh, I had some teammates in my family, and you no, know, my closest buddies were at the rooftop here in Regina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard that was a wild night. For yeah, me. yeah, it was. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah. So, just can you? We mentioned this earlier, but let's talk about it again. The synergy that you were born in Columbus, you're going to play in Columbus. Uh, with Patrick Line, I don't know if you guys would be in the same line or not because you both shoot right, right? But I'm left. Oh, you're left. Well, you might already. be on the same line <laughs> Maybe, then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? How do you feel about playing in Columbus? Yeah, I mean, no, no. My dad played there, and uh, even no guys like Ryan Murray, local guy here. Um, they have a lot of a lot of great things to say about the city, um, the organization, the fan base, kind of kind of everything. So um, that gets me really excited. And uh, no, when my dad played there, we've we are we had. No, my dad created a lot of a lot of relationships um, with with some people down there that um, we we still keep in contact with. So um, it'll be nice to go down there and see them. And uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to the to the whole process and see everything firsthand. I think he told me that his favorite city was Columbus. Columbus. Yeah, he says that. He says that if he had to 
if he could re-sign in an organization again and still play in the National Hockey League, he said it would be a Columbus. So that's pretty special. Why is yeah. that? I don't know. He just said he 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 loved it down there. Um, I mean, he he said he loved uh, loved his group, um, loved the organization, loved the fan base, loved the city. He just said he had nothing bad to say about it. And my mom loved it too, from her perspective. She said that there was so many good restaurants. Um, it was easy for her to kind of manage us three when she was down there. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, no kidding. Well, yeah. um, let me ask you this: You're the youngest of the three boys, and coming up. Everybody said, Cole's the one. Cole's the, Cole's the one. That's what they all said. I know that you're too humble to agree <laughs> with that, but, it, but that you were small, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Were you worried that you were never going to get to this? Um, no, I've always been a pretty, been a, no, pretty driven and, and focused kid. And uh, I mean, if you were to ask what I want to do when I was five years old, I'd tell you that I want to play in the National Hockey League and be a professional hockey right. player. So um, that's always stuck with my mind. And um, you know, every decision I make on a daily basis is towards that goal. So that's kind of the way I've always been. And uh, no, now I'm the biggest one in my family. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, exactly. That's how that <laughs> works. I mean, over six feet, over 200 pounds. So um, I, I like where I'm at physically. I like where I'm at mentally. Where did that uh, the spurt happen? When did you shoot up and um, out? After my Banamir, I think I was drafted at like five to the Western Hockey League, like five nine, I want to say, and then I played my first year in the Pack Canadians at six feet. Well, wow. yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because you know Pat's fans were so mad that you're not a Pat, <laughs> and I'm like, they didn't have a pick, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, or you, they, I'm sure you would have loved to have been a Pat too, but yeah. mm -hmm. everything happens for a reason. It's kind of been a theme of what you've said here. Mm -hmm. You didn't go to World Under 18s. You still ended up going 11th. You went to Medicine Hat. You love it there. You obviously love mm -hmm. Willie. So yeah. what's up between now and camp for the for you, for the Blue Jackets? Yeah, I mean, no, just going to, no, my, my brother's left today, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm the lone soldier with my family now, so um, just, just continue to train here and skate here with, you no know, Brent Bobbick and Next Level Hockey. It's kind of what I've been doing all summer, and, um, no, I, I trained with Dan Yaskwich out of Level 10 Sport Performance. We had a real good group there, so I plan to do that for, for the next, you no know, two to three weeks here, and then, uh, you no, know, hopefully head down to Columbus for, um, no, training camp, maybe, you no, know, a little bit before, just to, just to get a little comfortable um, with the, with everything down there. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully stick there as long as I can. Yeah, no kidding. Well, uh, congratulations on everything so far. Cole, as you know, the road's kind of just starting. Yeah. And you know that. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for coming in and spending the time with us. Enjoy what's left of summer. Thank you very much, Rod. appreciate it. Columbus Blue Jackets first round pick, Cole Sillinger, Medicine Hat Tigers forward. And uh, we'll be back with more. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus TV network, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds, full service car wash at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.